homework and learned helplessness. Are you unintentionally enabling your son or daughter's learned helplessness around homework? You might be, and I'm gonna tell you how to change this. That's the name they gave me. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, school social worker, certified ADHD clinical services provider, and my most important job is I'm a father to a son with ADHD. I want to tell you about a boy I worked with whose name was John. I met John when he was 13 and about to start eighth grade. So during our first meeting, um, John's mother explained to me that she would sit there every night with John when he had homework and basically, you know, do the homework with him. And she explained how she would try to make little games out of it to make it more fun or do things to sustain his attention. And I said to her, so what would happen if you didn't do that? And I said, what if you just walked away or you had a phone call or had to make dinner? She said he would just sit there and do nothing. And I said, how, when did this start? And she said, well, I guess in first grade. So I said to her, this needs to stop as of yesterday. I said to her, I know you're trying to be helpful here, but what has happened is you have enabled John's learned helplessness around homework. He learns that if he sits there passively and does nothing, you will basically spoon feed him the answers. So what has happened over the years is he has never developed the resiliency to get through this non-preferred task, which is homework. And at the end of the day, you know, really what ADHD is, it's difficulty sustaining attention to non-preferred tasks. So I said, it's time that John learns to be his own executive functioning instead of you being his executive functioning. So what needs to happen is there needs to be what's called a gradual release of responsibility where you are no longer acting as John's executive functioning. You are no longer enabling his learned helplessness and he's gonna learn how to do these things on his own. So we came up with a plan of what she was gonna do to start pulling away her support. I said to her, you know, obviously John is not going to get all his homework done and that's okay. But what I need you to do is explain to John's teachers what you're doing so they understand that there's probably going to be a drop in his homework because you're not going to be enabling him anymore. And on top of that, also, what you want is for his teachers to hold him accountable if he doesn't get something done or if it's not to their expectations. I have a really big thing that I teach parents that kids need to be held accountable by other people besides their parents because that is a life skill. So John's mother was very willing to try this plan, this gradual release of responsibility that we implemented. And as you would expect, John sat there passively and did nothing and he didn't get work done. John's mother did reach out to the teachers as I asked her to do and they were very supportive of this. And one of them even said to her, you know, I really appreciate you doing this because most parents will not do this because they are so concerned with grades that they're not thinking about the long-term picture here. And that's really what I want you to take from this. What I want you to understand is if you are sitting with your son or daughter doing homework, you are inflating their academic performance and you're really not giving the school a clear baseline of what their productivity looks like or their ability to work independently. And what we want is we want kids to be independent learners, not dependent on an adult. The learned helplessness John exhibited around homework was that he was just very passive, but a lot of kids take a much more kind of assertive approach where they will make self-defeating comments and say, I'm stupid, I can't do it, I hate myself, they'll hit themselves in the head. And what I want you to know is that at the end of the day, right, what learned helplessness usually turns into is emotional manipulation. So what it turns into is this is hard. You know, I want you to rescue me from it. And I know how I'm going to get you to rescue me from it by manipulating you emotionally, by making you feel bad for me. Now, parents say sometimes, well, when he says he hates himself, what if he really does? My response to that is you don't want to give attention to that. You don't want to give validity to those kind of statements. So do not respond to them. Do not try to soothe your son or daughter and make them feel better. Just keep on going because that's how they're going to build resiliency. So as you can imagine, there's a whole range of learned helplessness from John to the kids who are hitting themselves and saying, I'm stupid, I'm an idiot, I can't do it, and everything in between. So you really need to be able to recognize learned helplessness and understand that when you run in to rescue your son or daughter from non-preferred tasks, that you're really not doing them a service at all. And here's why. Because kids develop confidence through recognizing their abilities in themselves, not through their parents giving them affirmations, not from you telling them how smart they are, from them recognizing that they can do something they didn't think they were capable of doing. And at the end of the day, I think everybody wants their son or daughter to build confidence in their abilities. Now stay tuned for the next video so you can be empowered with practical strategies to help your son or daughter reach their full potential and not be living in your basement at 30. Take care.